So at the moment we're facing a really critical shortage um, of, of people to work in the sector. But actually there's a sort of a bigger story too, is actually, well, what about the future? If this is the situation at the moment, you know, what, what's going to happen, you know, five, ten years down the track? And to answer that, um, MPI did um, some predictive modelling. They looked at, you know, what kind of a workforce will we need, how many people will we need in about by 2025, what we'd need if we wanted to achieve our growth strategies. And at that point, um, all the industries in the primary sector were asked to, you know, kind of double their export growth. And they put out a report called the People Powered Report. And um, this is just the cut down version of it. So 50,000 more people would be needed in the sector by 2025. And that's on top of the existing people in the workforce and that's on top of people who might be moving out of the workforce. The other key finding was that we needed to have a better qualified workforce. We would need to have, 62% of our workforce would need to have some sort of formal post-secondary school qualification. So at the time when they did the report, the number was around 42%. So there's a big jump in people being trained, not just new people coming into the sector, but also the existing workforce to be better trained and to do their jobs they do. The last really key finding that came out of it was that there would be an increased demand for professional skills in science, technology and business and management. And that's not just people that are specialists in that. Clearly we do need specialist people to do the technology and develop new um, concepts for us. And also the scientists to do the, you know, the research around climate change and genetics and so forth. And of course it makes sense, like, you know, rather than individually every, every um, organisation going out and doing some of the work that we do to attract people into the sector, was actually if we just pulled our resources we can do a lot more. So one of the first things we did was to do some research in this space. We got Coleman Brunton to do a big survey, um, an online survey across all of New Zealand, not just urban schools but also rural schools. And we got students and parents, fortunately, so only 16% said they knew a lot or a fair amount about a sector and that was also reflected in their parents. So only 31% of the parents said they knew um, a, a little bit or a lot about our sector. We asked them a, um, a number of statements and asked them if they agreed or disagreed with them. So 75% agreed that it was important for New Zealand's economy. They also saw that there was lots of opportunities to innovate in our, our sector, that we were a really, really innovative sector, that there was access to lots of roles and in different places. There was flexibility about it, that you could work in the city or in the country, you could work in the North Island or South Island. They also agreed that there was sort of leading age, sophisticated technologies being used by the sector. Now to the not so good news. Some challenges here for us to, um, to address or to shift. So some of the negative ones were that they felt that there wasn't equal career opportunities. They also didn't find the sect a career in the sector particularly appealing. So 50%, less than 50% thought it was a highly appealing sector to work in. They also, despite the fact they thought that it was a highly skilled area, they didn't think it was a sector that would attract high achieving students. And also um, we asked them you know, this um, key question which was, would you consider a career in the primary sector? And as you can see, only a small percentage of them, 22% said, yep, that's for me. It's a very similar to the kind of results that they find in other, other countries that are agricultural based where they're struggling to connect with their um, people coming into the sector. So what kind of jobs they thought that they might be going into if they're going to go and have a, a career in our sector. So predominantly the kind of jobs were farm workers, forestry workers and fisheries workers and with um, jobs like um, robotics engineer which we know is a really important um, supporting area uh, for the sector ranked really da right down on the bottom only 22 percent associated that with the sector one of the other really interesting things that came out of the, the research that we did which wasn't something that we looked to doing is that we actually found that as we raised the students' awareness about the kind of roles in the sector because that's a very sort of um, insightful thing that actually there's a, some work we can do in terms of raising awareness and actually by that connecting with them and encouraging more people to think about a career in our sector. So, uh, no young people make their views or decisions in isolation. So, when you think of kids at school, you know, I'm sure many of you got kids at school, particularly in secondary school, they get access to a wide range of sources to make those decisions. So when we actually looked at what was most influential in their career choices, the top two were actually people working in a job of interest. So actually someone who's in that job that they talk to or they have uh, exposure to is the, is the most influential on that de their decision to go into a career. So the last part of the puzzle really is around what was important for 
young people when they're considering kids? What are the things that are really going to motivate them to, 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 to consider a, a, a job or a particular career? And we can, I think we can probably all relate to these. These probably haven't changed very much in my time, really. So good employment opportunities, international connections, variety, in, being intellectually stimulating and challenging, and also access to um, study options and learning. So that idea about constantly learning is really, really important. So what I've put together here is some strategies that, so turn that research into some strategies that we have been um, implementing in our um, program to attract young people into the sector. So the first one is what we talked about, is uh, raising awareness and the diversity of roles and pathways. So that's really important. Making young people aware that actually it's more than just farm workers. There's a whole spectrum of careers there. And you might start off as farm worker, but actually there's a career progression that you can do to being farm manager or you know business owners. Um, dispel misconceptions, um, so not just to young people, but obviously it's really important to dispel that with their influences, like their teachers and their parents as well. Introduce career um, awareness early in schooling. We've mainly been focused in secondary school, but actually um, recent research is showing that actually going into primary school is a really key time to start to make kids aware of, of what the opportunity is, because they form their ideas really early on about what careers they'll do. Education resources is really important, so integrating our sector into mainstream and also into subject specific um, topics. As you're probably aware, there's um, specific ag hort subjects that kids can do at school. Um, Recognise and address valid concerns. So increasingly we know younger people are concerned about climate crisis and sustainability. We need, we need to be on the front foot addressing that, not sort of pretending it doesn't exist. They want to be able to understand that that's, that's something that's being dealt with and they're part of the solution. Motivational access, we already talked about that, and also um, one of the other things is really focus on uh, city roles for um, those strongly tied to the city. So it's really hard for someone who's coming from an urban background to transition into a, a rural type of role, so it's better not to put effort into doing that, but actually uh, young people who come from a rural background are more likely to go into those roles. So focus those pathways for those students and look at other opportunities for those. This illustrates some of the um, some of the um, branding we've been doing. So we go out with the Growing NZ brand because that's neutral, people, people can relate to that, it's um, fresh and appealing. We paint a diverse picture of the kind of roles and opportunities in the sector and we do that through illustrations and icons. Um, this is just one of the things we have um, numerous um, poster series that highlight young people, who, real people, authentic people, you know, in this day of transparency, they really care. Um, they, they can tell if something's not genuine, so we use real people. These are all real people. We talk about the food and fibre sector. We don't use the word primary industry or primary sector anymore. We found primary industry had really negative connotations. Nobody knew what it meant. Um, primary sector also created challenges for us because um, when you're dealing in the school environment, you talk about the primary sector, they immediately think you're talking about primary school education, so that didn't work so well either. We do um, a number of activities with young people that we connect with them, so we go out to um, careers expos, we have school visits, um, and also we run experience days as well. So we have one which is an innovation challenge day, it's called Growing Ends Innovation Challenge, and that's when we get young students, mainly from technology, business and science, and we get them to solve a real challenge that we currently have in our sectors. We take teachers on teacher days out where we take a bunch of teachers to visit some sites so they can learn about the business and hear from um, business owners and their workers about the role. Always have to prove that what you're doing is successful. So I've just quickly got some slides here showing how we, we measure things post-event to see whether we've had an impact. Careers Expos, after um, students visited us and talked to us or and did an exercise, 83% were more aware about career opportunities. And similarly then, they were more likely to consider careers. And the final one is also with um, our teacher conferences and teacher days out. We'll have um, careers advisors that go along, um, transition educators as well, and they get a really good um, feeling for what roles are available, the pathways for their students, opportunities to connect in with industry after the event. So what are, what are we doing going forward? Well, we can always do more. So from our perspective, it's about um, ex extending our, the work that we do to um, wider audiences, going out there doing more with stuff. Um, we also really interested, because we're a research-based organisation, we're interested in doing some research into successful transition, because there's one thing for us to attract people into the sector, but there's that next step that it has to be successful. They have to be aware of what the reality is of those jobs. 
Um, the very last thing is the Food and Fibre Skills Action Plan. Um, MPI got a bunch of industry groups together last year to develop up or to, to try and address the capability challenge, which is not just around attracting, but also around the education and employment side of it. And it looked at some really key actions that we could do in the different areas around, um, around research, um, around education, around attraction, and around employment. So there's lots of things that are happening out there. You probably know about the reforms for the vocational education as well, which is trying to address that thing about encouraging more um, young people to look at vocational pathways as well.